Action work session. Oh, Roll call. Mayor Wilson. Present. Vice Mayor Rizzi. Present. Council Member Biggs. Present. Council Member Evans. Here. Council Member Gremmel. Here. Council Member Nesser. Present. Council Member Schroeder. Here. You have a quorum, Your Honor. Thank you. Resolution number 21-42, discussion on intergovernmental agreement between the city and Maricopa County. Shane. Good evening, Mayor, Vice Mayor, Council Members. Good, uh, beautiful Arizona Monday evening. Thank you, Matt, for bringing up the presentation. Again, my name is Shane Kiesel, Public Works Manager. So I'm going to be talking to you about an item here tonight that uh, we've been working on for many years, I guess, with the county. Started with Pinal County a few years ago, and hopefully we'll be finishing up tonight or tomorrow night uh, with this item on consent. So we'll get right into it here. Uh, so again, tonight is item just for presentation and discussion of entering into a resolution which will uh, pave the way to get into an in IGA with Maricopa County for exchange of services. Uh, that's their term, fancy term for street maintenance agreement. That's essentially what this IGA is about and it's, uh, uh, its term is about 10 years just like the one we've done in the past with Pinnell County and it is for consideration tomorrow night so not uh, so just for discussion and then uh, be on consent for tomorrow night if all is good so background need again as i mentioned this is a two-part effort we work with two counties with maintaining some shared streets and these are usually border streets uh, with a county pinal county we have pinal county islands within the city that we have some shared streets and then with uh, McDot, we have Meridian Drive, or what they call is Meridian Road, as well as a portion of Baseline that are the two roadways that would be subject to this IGA. And what it would do is cover these scallop streets, and I'll give you an example in a minute what a scallop street, what we call it, is. And it would cover just routine and regular maintenance. And the reason for that is we don't want to do anything much above that because when you start getting into paving projects or reconstruction now your scope of work is quite large quite uh, you know significant dollar amounts so this is actually just street maintenance that is often frequent and shorter in duration and that's one of the main benefits of this iga which i'll touch base with you in just a minute so when i say a scallop street here's a picture of southern avenue so this is a scallop street that's shared between city of apache junction and pinal county you can see Pinal County actually owns the southern part of Southern and we own the northern part. So it's not practical that we just do maintenance on the westbound lane where they just do maintenance on the eastbound lane and not do the maintenance at all together on the full segment of streets. So this IGA will actually allow MGDOT and the city of Apache Junction like what we've done with Pinal County to take a certain full segment of street. Hey, city of AJ maintains this street at McDot, you maintain the full width of this part of Meridian, for example. So benefits, uh, I think you probably just already deduced what the main benefit is. Again, these projects are very short in duration, so what will happen is we will have a continuity of maintenance, meaning the full street will be maintained, full width versus only one half of the street at a time. We'll take advantage of the economies of scale of doing a larger segment at a time versus smaller segments of streets where uh, we pay a lot for mobilization, the equipment, the contractor to do it. So we'll be doing larger segments, taking, uh, uh, gaining efficiencies there. Actually, the street quality um, of the street will go up to when we do maintenance holistically with the whole segment of street versus half streets. That increases the life of the street. Also, uh, you'll see safety aspects of the street where the striping, for example, is consistent on, on, the, street, on the streetway. And also aesthetics, and when I say aesthetics, maintenance, you know, cutting off the maintenance at certain points, doing longer segments at a time versus just little piecemeal sections that, that look odd. Um, also, when it comes to routine maintenance means picking up garbage, illegal dumping. A lot of these streets, we can actually respond faster than McDot. And, uh, and that, in a roundabout way, then adds better customer service. We're not asking hey, what side of the street did you see that garbage? Was it on the west side of Meridian or east side? <laughs> we could, they could just tell us location and we'll know, you know who's responsible to go, to go grab it. All right, and that was a, just a quick nutshell of what we're trying to do with this IGA that will be before you, I guess, t uh, tomorrow night. So I'm open to any questions or any comments. I have one. Yes. 
Um, and I know this is kind of in the future, but will we have the same sort of agreement for south, the land we just annexed? Will half a meridian be part of the Maricopa County as well? Um, it might be, it or might not. It will be just depending on how we do the the annex or the development of of Meridian. Of Meridian itself. I would prefer, okay. and I believe it actually state law too. If we annex a, a corridor or a full street, we actually take the whole street okay. with it instead of half a street. And I think that changed about 10, 10 some years ago. But we have a lot of quite a few streets. We probably have around six, seven miles of streets that we have our scallop streets that we have to have this IGA to, to maintain. Okay. Your Honor. Yes. Uh, just for clarification, the, is the reason that Mesa is not included in this IGA because it's technically a part of the, their county island? Um, right now, what our right away shows us is Mesa doesn't own necessarily a part of Mesa, so it is within Mc McDot or Maricopa County. Okay. So I think that's answering your question of this IGA would cover their portion, which is a small portion up on the northern, northwest part of part of town. Okay. So in those in those areas, if somebody had a um, complaint or a question, would they call the city and the city would determine if it's county or city that handles that section? Correct. And then uh, Maricopa County too on their on site um, where people could file their concern or complaint, they actually have a nice interactive map that you could choose that will actually show folks which streets they maintain. So hopefully, you know, they'll make it easier for those folks that either go to McDot or the, the city of what streets who maintains. Thank you. Anyone else? Well, thank you. Thank you. So your honor, unless we hear differently, we're going to keep it on for consent tomorrow. Okay. okay. All right. <clears throat> Tonight, we'll be conducting interviews for the annual appointments to all boards and commissions. We are interviewing all applicants tonight, and we'll be finalizing the appointments during, this, during our regular session tomorrow night. Interviews will be done alphabetically by applicant. Thanks, Shane. And, and Jennifer. Shall I kick you off? Okay, so as you notice this year, um, in efforts to efficiently utilize this time for council and the applicants, staff has modified the process of interviewing and appointing to the boards and commissions. <clears throat> Tonight's work session, as you already addressed, um, you can interview all of the applicants. They are listed in alphabetical order, and this will uh, alleviate the need to call them back in two weeks for another interview, maybe on the other boards or commissions they applied for. Um, you'll notice that not only are they listed alphabetical order, they have also ranked their preference to which board they want to serve on if they applied for more than one. You do have the ability to ask an applicant if you find that they are qualified maybe in, for another board or commission they did not apply for. You can always ask them if they'd like to serve on a different board or commission. Um, council does not need to fill every seat on every board or commission if you feel that you don't have a candidate that might fit that position. As long as the Border Commission has a quorum to meet, um, they can still hold their meetings. I only have a few updates. Your first applicant, Carlos Aguirre, has withdrawn his application today. And then as you see the pink sheet before you, Sarah was received a new position and has a conflict with the Planning and Zoning Commission she applied for, but is still willing to serve on another Border Commission that you feel might fit her. That is all I have for you. Okay, so then we will start alphabetically in it, and I'll call Mr. Jeff Barlett. <laughs> I'm um, first, they can just show I'm an example of what not to do. <laughs> okay. Just relax, Jeff. All right. <laughs> But I'm, I'm Jeff Barlett, and I was on the library board, and I was board vice president, industrial development authority, which never meets. I resigned both of them, just to let you know. I mean, everything I have written here is uh, what I gave you guys. So this is my, uh, this is every, every question you guys had here, just my statement here. But, uh, 
Just give me a second here. <laughs> but I mean, I'm trying to get on the Planning and Zoning Commission. I mean, you guys know me here. I'm a local activist. I get up and I speak on things. Usually, most of the time I've gotten up, it's been planning and, res planning and zoning things that I've spoken on. And I don't think it was a good idea to call me up here first either. You're doing fine. Yeah. But I mean, I personally would see that, I mean, planning and zoning is my preference. I mean, that's where I'd be most qualified for, in my opinion. I mean, I used to have a real estate license in Texas. I have didn't sell any homes. I just s sent all my money to the broker because you have to pay desk fees to get, get licensed out there. It's expired. And as far as, I mean, the other boards I applied for, I applied for Board of Adjustments because, I mean, if I don't get planning and zoning, I mean, you could appeal the, uh, people could appeal the decision to them. So, I mean, I think that would be, I mean, either one of those two boards would be good for me. I mean, I'm more in favor of trying to help the applicant out. I, you guys know my philosophy about property owners. I kind of think they should be able to do what they want with their property, but I think there'd be a lot of back and forth between me and Joel if you put me on either one of those boards because obviously there's laws that need to be followed. And then I did put in for health and human services. I mean, I've gotten up here and spoke on things that I think need to be done relating to that. Again, that'd probably be more back and forth between me and the city attorney to see what we can do. I mean, I think the city can use public transportation, health care, but then you got to see what can be done there. And then another one I put in for was a municipal property com corporation. That only meets once a year. So, I mean, that's, I mean, in my opinion, you can kind of throw anybody on any of these boards. It's pretty much, I mean, comes down to like, how does this person, like, like if I were a council member and I were appointing board members, a lot of it kind of would be based off of would this person vote the way I would, and that's kind of how I would think. I mean, it's more based off of what someone's philosophy is, in my opinion, than what their experience is. And uh, any questions here? Anyone have any questions? Yeah, you're on. You okay, Jeff. Jeff, did you take the Citizens Leadership Institute? Yes, I did. Okay, just curious. You don't. It, it's okay. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. Here's the proof. Good job. In case anybody job. tries to tell me I didn't. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. But yeah, my best advice would be just read through my application, everything I had written there, hold because it. I'm the worst speaker here. That's no, okay. okay. I, got, I have a yeah. question for you, Jeff. Yeah. <laughs> they got a couple on your way. Yeah. <laughs> now, you said at the very beginning, Jeff, that, that you had resigned yeah. from a couple of, could you explain what, why that was? I wrote it down in my application, and yeah. it's, it's just not the right board for me. Okay. I don't think the library board was a good idea. Industrial Development Authority, I don't even know when the last time that board's ever met, and I don't even think it will. Uh, Jeff, so, I mean, w did you actually apply for the library board, or did we ask you out of the audience? I, I applied. Okay, I don't remember. More of he talked me into doing it, but <laughs> yeah, I, I don't want to go back on that board. I don't think it's a good idea. I mean, I don't, I'm not interested in anything I didn't apply for, because I don't, I don't want to make that same mistake. And actually... I would recommend you probably asking people, like, is this real, what they really want to do in this board? Because, I mean, some of the, like, for example, someone who's wanting to be on the library board, they got, they got to be going to the library. They got to be interested in that kind of stuff. Me, I'm getting up here speaking on, you, usually at council meetings, usually planning and zoning kind of stuff. I think I'd probably be better at that. And I mean, I used to have a real estate license. I don't anymore, but I'm more familiar with that kind of stuff. Jeff. Anyone else over here? No. Okay. I got a question. Oh, Braden, you have a question for me? You can go first if you'd like. I see here, so planning and zoning would be your first choice. Yeah, that's my first choice. Did you, we just had a planning and zoning meeting. Did you attend it or did you watch the video? I, I, I spoke at the ones who, I think it was three weeks ago. You guys had a, you guys were building it, bringing in houses. And this is another thing you'll be seeing too. I mean, I noticed a lot of people, they don't like the development out here in this town. I mean, a lot of people oppose kind of like how I feel. I got up there speaking, 
this is what I think is best for the people. A lot of people are probably going to disagree with me on decisions. I'm not here to tell people what they want to hear. I think what would be best, these decisions are bringing in houses for people to live in that can lower the cost of living. I mean, it's supply and demand there, but a lot of people, they either don't realize that or it's, uh, I mean, you have people who, they might be concerned about little things like something obstructs their view of the mountain or whatever it is. I've noticed some people, they don't like certain groups of people coming out here. I don't know if certain people have like a, I, some people might have a prejudice towards certain groups. I don't know, but I'm not going to just assume that either. I just, that's just what I heard too. So you didn't attend the last meeting or watch it? Not, not last week. Okay. I was at the one three weeks ago. Okay. Um, Jeff, you, and I just for clarification's sake, you had indicated that uh, planning and zoning was your number one choice and health and human services your second with Board of Adjustments as your third. Yeah. But earlier it kind of sounded like Board of Adjustments might be your second choice over health and human services. Can I think health and, hu health and human services is my second choice. Okay. I mean, that meets more often and I kind of want to push some ideas through that. Okay, absolutely. Thank you. All right. <clears throat> Anyone else? You can you can push ideas by attending um, different meetings and contacting the the president or the board of those meetings as well. And um, I'm I'm just sharing this with you in case you're not selected. You can always be involved where you think you can make a difference. There's you don't have to be on the board. Just so know. you know, just just share that. Yeah, I already do that, and in my and actually, just so other people know that too. I mean, in my opinion, I mean, probably the most influential person in the room at any time is the person right here. I mean, there's people here that I mean that come up here and they speak their opinion. I mean. It is what it is. You're not getting paid for these boards, so. Okay, yep. thank you. Mayor. M Mr. Beal. Your Honor, before we move on, I do just have a clarifying question of either Jennifer or Joel, if I could. Um, on Regarding specifically the Health and Human Services Commission, it says that it's a five-member board, um, and I know that that's been the case traditionally in the past. Uh, a little bit earlier, I was able to at least briefly talk with Jennifer about the opportunity. We have a lot of applicants. Is there an opportunity for us to move that to a seven-member board if we wanted to possibly appoint more members to serve on that committee? Uh, Mr. Mayor, Councilmember Biggs, yes, you may. You can change the city code, and you could add members if you'd like. That's, that's not a state-required board. It's a local government board but we wouldn't be able to appoint more members tomorrow because it... No, because right now the code says five members. Okay. <clears throat> and that's not necessarily a bad idea per se as we grow. You know, we may have a need for more a, a larger board in that area. Good question, Braden. When the board originally formed back in 88, 89 or earlier, it was a seven-member board. They had a lot of suggestions um, reading those minutes back then. Um, and I... I just don't know at what point it became a five-member board. In the past years that we've had, we've had difficulty in finding members to serve on Health and Human Services. Um, so I think maybe that's one of the reasons it went to a lower number on the board. Well, we know we can function with uh, five, mm -hmm. but if so if there were two vacancies per se, if we decided for that to expand, it would just give the opportunity to have. Good question. I, thought, I think that was a great idea. All right. We'll try again, Mr. Beal. <clears throat> Good evening, Charles Beal, uh, longtime resident of the city. I'm here to make myself available to the boards if needed <clears throat> and where needed. I bring a vast amount of experience and knowledge, and I like to think that I do my job when it comes to the process required for the boards. So, you know, consider me for what you need. You're an incumbent on the MPC board. That's correct. Do you want to continue on it? That's sure. Okay. But I want to make it available to other people as well. You know, I don't want to just fill a billet. You know, if there's somebody out there that, you know, would like to take that position, I'm more than happy to, you know, step back. Okay. Anyone got any questions on this side? Yeah. Nope. 
Yes. Uh, you said you want to make yourself available for any board. Any any other board in particular that you may? So I I, I tend to travel a lot. So uh, scheduling can be a conflict for me sometimes, but I'm typically able to work around it. Something that doesn't take a lot of time. Uh, planning and zoning would probably be a bad one for me, you know, because it does require a lot of time and a lot of study. So that would probably pull a whole lot of time out of my schedule. And I don't know if I have that, that much time, but all, all the other boards probably would not, you know. There's other boards that are, you know, are less impactful to my schedule. Okay. Thank you. All right. Anyone else? Mm -mm. Well, thank you. Thank you. Okay, Dirk. Good evening, Mr. Mayor and Council Members. I don't know what I need to tell you because most of you all know me anyway. Well, you're an incumbent on the planning and zoning. Do you want to continue on the planning and zoning? I would enjoy continuing on the planning and zoning commission, yes. <coughs> okay. Does anyone else have any other questions? I see some writings down there. I do, Your Honor. Yes. Uh, I've got a couple, Dirk. Um, first off, I'm very curious to know, as an incumbent member, what do you think the Planning and Zoning Commission uh, could improve upon? Paying attention to the wants and the wishes of the community. Okay. Uh, how do you feel that uh, council could better support as an uh, incumbent member? How, how could we better support Planning and Zoning? Listen to the community. Uh, okay, and then my last question. Um, how do you feel about, uh, I, I've heard discussion on kind of both sides uh, in regards to planning and zoning being a recommending body who recommends uh, a decision to council. How do you feel about us going with your recommendation or against your recommendation? Well, obviously, if I vote for something as a planning zoning commissioner, I would appreciate the city council voting alongside of me. But I don't have any feelings one way or the other. It's your decision to make. We make a recommendation, and it's your obligation to review the facts and then make your decisions. So it doesn't really affect me one way or the other. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. <clears throat> Anyone else? I just have a comment off of what was said. Um, Dirk, sometimes what happens, and, I, and you guys may not know this, because it's not real common for um, council members to attend uh, the PNZ for obvious reasons. Um, we may be watching them online. Sometimes what can happen is information can change from the time that you guys had the information and made the decision. And so I know people often ask that question, well, why would council that, vote against That's so, understood, yeah, Councilperson yeah. Rizzi. Just wanted to share that, yeah. It's not so much that it's not necessarily voting against, it's just that sometimes there's a, and then you got seven different eyes, so it, it can happen. <clears throat> Thank you. I have a question. Thank you. Oh, you have a question, I'm sorry. Hey, so the, at, there was a time where um, <laughs> all CUPs um, went through council and and uh, planning and zoning was a recommended body. Since then, CUPs stayed with planning and zoning and they don't come through council. Down the road, that should change back to um, planning and zoning becomes a recommending body instead of a final decision on a CUP. How would that make you feel? If that's the desire of the council, I wouldn't have anything to say about it. Personally, I think some of you, as you all know, have quite a bit of things on your plates with your interagency organizations that you attend, the council meetings that you uh, oversee, and the other business that's conducted in the city. I don't see where it would be a harm to the city or the city council to leave the CUP decision 
with the Planning and Zoning Commission, but that would be your decision. Thank you. <coughs> Don't see any other questions, right? Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> okay. Uh, Mr. Brenneman. Dr. Michael Brenneman. Hard to read these. <laughs> Good evening, Mayor, Council Members. My name is Dr. Michael Edward Brennan. I'm a board certified psychiatrist by the American Board of Psychiatry and Neurology. I am a distinguished life fellow of the American Psychiatric Association. I'm also board certified by the American Board of Quality Assurance Utilization Review and Quality Assurance and Risk Management. I'm a member emery, emeritus of that organization. My predominant career, as you've probably reviewed in my curriculum vitae, has been in academic psychiatry. I taught at Maricopa Integrated. I was there for over 20 plus years. I was medical director of inpatient services. I taught first year residents basic psychopharmacology, third year residents administrative psychiatry, and fourth year residents advanced biological psychiatry. I've been president of the uh, Arizona Psychiatric Society. I have been, as well, a chief medical officer of Magellan of Arizona. I was a prior corporate medical director for <laughs> charter hospitals and took care of all of the hospitals east of the Mississippi. I guess they thought that I'd never get snowed in if I left from Arizona. <laughs> so let me, let me do that. What they forgot is I could get snowed out. At any rate, um, I have been a medical consultant to the Arizona Medical Board. I collaborated on physician ethics, physician mental health issues, physician behavior and boundary issues, as well as collaborated with Dr. Michael Sutcher and Dr. David Greenberg on substance-related issues. I was a medical director for Community Bridges for their Emergency Crisis Intervention Center and dealt with the prelude to court commitment and at Maricopa Medical Center, of course, we did court commitment. I presented at the Gaines Conference in Boston to a national conference on standards for commitment because Arizona actually is rather unique. We have four standards of commitment. We have two urgent, danger to self, danger to others, and we have two non-urgent, which are gravely disabled and persistent and or acute disability. The latter one is predicated on a concept in neurology psychiatry called negative neuroplastic changes that go on as someone's illness is persistent and it isn't dealt with. Um, I, you know, I, I, I could go on, that was too self-flattering, I don't mean to do that. Um, I am applying for Health and Human Services because I believe that's probably the only commission I'm really qualified for, for two reasons. Not only my background, but I don't really live in the city of Apache Junction. I live just outside. I live pretty close to the base of the Station Mountain. And I've lived there pretty soon for 11 years. And uh, I have to say I'm really enamored with it. So. Uh, um, if you have any questions, my curriculum vitae is there, and I'll be ready to field any questions you have for me. Have you attended any of those meetings? The Health no. and Human Services? No, I haven't. paid attention to the... I went to look, and the only thing I could find, and I don't know if I'm just not astute enough to find anything on the web, but I found something for Pinell County, and they had three major areas of interest, and they were substance abuse and treatment, mental health, and nutrition and physical wellness. And I figure I meet two of those. Yes. I have two short questions. Sure. Um, it goes along with what Krista just asked you. Um, the liaison for this commission is Jennifer Pena, our city clerk. Have you gone and spoken with her and sat down and to find out what this job would entail? No, I haven't. Okay. Have you read the annual report? I have not. Okay. Thank you. It, it might be a little bit different than what you think. Yeah, I bet. Honest. Yeah. <laughs> Kelly? No, Your Honor. 
Uh, I noticed that you have not gone through our CLI or Citizens Leadership Institute. Um, obviously, the, the current class has already gone through, but we'll have one up again in the spring. Would that be something that you uh, would consider doing if you were appointed? Yeah, I'd consider that. Yeah. Yes. Um, it says you're currently employed by Behavioral Systems of Southwest. Where are they located? Okay, Behavioral Systems Southwest has two major facilities that I'm the medical director for. One is in Florence and the other one is in Tucson. Oh. They deal with the reintegration of both state and federal felons that have behavioral health and substance abuse issues. If you'll think about it, one of the biggest problems that had taken place for the longest time was that people were released from prison mm -hmm. and just sort of thrust in the community. Yep. This is a real mechanism to try and reintegrate them more smoothly and hopefully successfully. Okay. Um, also, I don't know if you're aware, but our new judge is looking for a behavioral health specialist to sit on the court as well as a volunteer. <laughs> So that's something that I don't know how much time you have or how often they're going to meet, but that might be something that would fit into what you're doing as well because we both deal with the um, justice system. Um, there was one more question. Oh, I know. If you get really bored, Tuesday nights here could be a case study. To just <laughs> <laughs> That, that'd be really interesting, yeah. I'm really so, curious to know your you know, of all of us. In, <laughs> in, in referencing judges, actually, uh, Michael Hensey used to be a lawyer at Maricopa Integrated and dealt with the commitment process. He moved from that to commissioner of the mental health court. He is now a judge for the city of Phoenix. Mm -hmm. And so I've had lots of interaction. In fact, he was one of the individuals that I interacted with when we went back to the Gaines Commission because that was attended not only by mental health providers but as well the judiciary and um, multiple law enforcement agencies. Well, thank you so much. It's not an easy job. No. Yeah, I bet. Mm -hmm. Your Honor. Hey. I have a question, but not for the applicant. It might be for Jennifer. So this, this particular board, um, five members, three at least residents, two um, non-residents. Now, is this set up that way? Because preferably we would like to have a couple on that board that is a non-resident. I couldn't answer how the board was originally formed with resident versus non-resident. Um, I, as I recall, we've had this discussion in the past that we wanted to make sure we could uh, fill it with the right people, and, and those people weren't always found just in the community, so that we wanted to branch out to that area of influence because our nonprofits also reach out to mm -hmm. a greater area than just the city boundaries. So out of all sense. of our wards and commissions here, there's literally just one that we decided to reach out to non-residents to find better applicants? Th there's two that are two commission as well. Yeah. Oh, well, the arts yeah. commission, yeah. yeah. So it isn't a matter of, hey, we would like to see two non-residents uh, and then three residents. It was a matter of necessity to get the people on the board. I, I've heard that as part of the discussion in the past. Mm -hmm. That's probably not going that back to the 80s or 90s when they established it, but that's been more of the recent years discussion. Your Honor? Yes. Um, you mentioned community bridges, and I've got a lot of experience lately contacting them in regards to issues with our, our homeless here locally. Do you have a business card? You know, um, Mike Sutcher and I remain good friends. Um, actually, I was a resident physician when he was an ER provider at what was then called Scottsdale Memorial. So our history goes back a long time, as my heir might reveal. Um, and so he is the chief medical officer of Community Bridges, and I would be glad to contact him on behalf of the city if that becomes an issue. I would appreciate that, and I only ask because often after the meeting, people run out, and I don't run very well I'm trying to catch up, so thank you. Yeah. If we could connect, I'd appreciate it. Oh, yeah, no, absolutely. Thank you. No one else? Thank you very much. <clears throat> You're welcome. Okay, Richard Cantwell. <clears throat> <clears throat> Thank you. 
Good evening, Mr. Mayor, members of the council. I'm Dick Cantwell. I've been on plan commission for <coughs> just short of a year now. Um, my wife and I moved to Apache Junction about four and a half years ago to be closer to our grandsons. Uh, prior to that, we spent 25 years in Munster, Indiana, where I was on the plan commission and board of zoning appeals for over 20 years. And then with the job change, moved to Mokina, Illinois um, for 10 years and five years I was on their plan commission. So both of those are suburbs of Chicago. And you're the incumbent, and I assume that you want to continue on? Yes. Okay, does anyone have any questions? How's Open it going? Inside. How's it going? I'm enjoying it. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> it's a very interesting time. It is. Um, you know, we've just gone through the 2020 census and you see about all of these cities that are the fastest growing cities in the country. Income 2030, guess who's going to be high on that list? Apache Junction. Mm -hmm. yeah. What's your opinion on uh, Council Member Big's CUP question? He asked if- um, That was mine. I, I'd oh, love okay. the credit for it, but it was all Robert. Okay, <laughs> well Robert asked about the CUP. Um, I have, most of the time I've done CUPs in the past, it has been for a recommendation to council. Um, I don't have a strong feeling on it one way or the other. Um, I think CUPs probably belong in the same process as the other resolutions. <coughs> you know, you're, you're the final authority on things and you know, just like with the Board of Adjustments making decisions that don't get reviewed by city council. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we can make some decisions that may not be in the same line of thinking that you folks are. Anyone else over here? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, I'd like to ask the, the same three questions I asked uh, Dirk. Being an incumbent, um, but one, how do you, uh, or rather, what do you feel P&Z could do better, or how could we support you? Um, I think of P&Z, quite frankly, as working pretty well. Um, Any time you're dealing with planning staff, P and Z, and city council, you are going to have differences of opinion. Mm -hmm. um, and the way that those get communicated, I think probably could stand some improvement. You know, in the past, um, we always had one of the council members either as an official member of the planning commission or as an ex officio. And that was a great way to get some communication. Mm -hmm. I, I've, uh, looked, I've looked a lot into that. Actually. And, uh, you know, that the communication, I think, is important because we make recommendations and then you guys take the issue and then rehash everything, um, almost as though you're starting from scratch. I don't know how much of our discussion you have seen. Um, sometimes there's different things that we discuss that don't necessarily make it to the minutes mm -hmm. and may, may or may not be important in the future decisions. You're also seeing things um, from a different perspective than we are. So, um, you know, I think better communications would be appropriate. Great, thank you. Good to um, I just want to add one comment there, that there is, everything does make it to the minutes, it's just on video, not written minutes. Mm -hmm. I understand. So that the public understands that, that it, you know, if you want to see exactly what happened, it's in the video. Yeah, and, and I don't know how much you folks are reviewing the video. You guys have kind of a full agenda, and um, I've watched some of your meetings, and um, I assume you've watched some of ours, mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, I think, you know, we have some discussions that you don't necessarily have. Um, and then my last question is, uh, being on the PNZ, how do you feel about council not necessarily taking the recommendation and modifying it or changing it? Like I said, there's going to be differences of opinion. Okay, we're going through one now that, you know, PNZ is looking at a situation differently than what planning committee did or the planning group did. Okay, who's right? I don't know. Ultimately, you will may be making that decision. Um, so, uh, you know, I don't view conflict as being a negative. Right. 
okay? You have to have an exchange of ideas and you have to get to the right solution. Just like, you know, we get good input from some residents <laughs> and we get some, I'll call it interesting. <laughs> <laughs> The classic one that I have is uh, we had somebody who sent around a petition and got 150 signatures because we were going to install some cell phone towers 150 feet from her house and the neighborhood, and that was going to affect everybody's pacemakers um, through electromagnetic radiation. That wasn't here. No, that was months. I'm <laughs> just making sure. Trust me. I happened to be working at a company that did electronic repair. So I was able to talk to some very skilled electricians who informed me that, yes, electromagnetic radiation is a cube root function, so it dissipates extremely rapidly. So you, you go out and you try to find the facts wherever you can. Thank you. Okay, anyone else? No, no you're fine. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, I, I apologize. Syrah. Siri. Gary. Siri Gerstner. Gerstner. Not here. Siri. Siri. Okay. Um, boy. Um, Glynis. Glynis Getman. Good evening. Um, <clears throat> my first time doing something like this, so forgive me if I'm a little nervous. <clears throat> I, I had applied for both the um, Arts Commission and the Health and Human Services Commission. I, standing here now, I think I am um, underprepared and underqualified, perhaps. <laughs> um, I wanted to apply for the Health and Human Services because I do have some background in the medical arena, not as a medical person myself, I was a human resources manager, I, so I worked closely with all the staff in both a, a nursing home as well as a home health care company. Um, also being elderly myself, um, I think that also uh, would provide some insight to with what our, our elderly population uh, might need and help with. Um, I say that um, I'm underprepared because based on Dr. Br oh. Um, oh. he certainly far outshines any qualifications I might have, but I will say that I am certainly willing to do whatever it is that the commission needs to be done. I feel like I'm a team worker. I think a team brings a variety of perspectives to any situation, and I think generally speaking you get a better outcome when you have more eyes looking at something instead of fewer eyes. Mm -hmm. In terms of the um, Arts Commission, I don't have any work-related experience in that area, but for my entire life I've been involved with the arts, uh, whether it's my own personal enjoyment or I've been involved in a variety of community theaters over the years, including being president of some of the organizations that I was uh, engaged with. Um, that's a field that interests me a good deal because um, I guess I'm an artsy kind of person. I, um, so I guess those are the things I would tell you about myself. Um, so do you have any questions? Mm -hmm. Yes. You want to expand a little bit more on uh, experience or what you do with arts? And oh, okay. Well, I, I mean, I, I enjoy going for sure. So I'm a spectator often, but um, when I was involved with the community theater, um, I, I had a variety of roles. You know, we were building sets, we were uh, doing contracts to have facilities where we could put our shows on. Uh, we even got kicked out of a facility one year and I had to find a tent <laughs> where we could put the show on. That happened to be the year I was president. But um, I have um, uh, just, objects of art that I've collected myself over the years, things hanging in my house, sitting on my shelves, um, <coughs> southwestern stuff, horse stuff. <laughs> um, but uh, so is that, is that helpful? Yes. Yeah, just wanted to know. 
possibly what kind of arts you had ever been involved with? There's all, when we say the term arts, you know, that covers know, a, is, a plethora of things. But uh, I'd be, you know, music, ballet, theater, uh, musicals, uh, just almost everything really that's involved in the arts, uh, doing, doing museum, cruising through museums and galleries and stuff. Okay, thank you. You're at. Anything else? Kelly? Yeah. Sorry, I'm so nervous. <laughs> no, don't worry about it. <laughs> yeah, yes. um, you're fine. <laughs> am I correct to understand uh, we don't have a ranking of the boards that you've applied for? So, am I correct to understand that you've applied for Board of Adjustments, Health and Human Services, Planning and Zoning, and Public Arts? No, I only actually applied for two, and that was the Arts Commission and the Health and Human Services mm -hmm. Commission. That was the, those were the only positions that the computer system told me were available. Okay. But I think as a beginner that those two would probably be the best places for me to start because I do feel I have something to bring to those. Mm -hmm. those areas wonderful <clears throat> thank you and then do you have a preference over one or the other in terms of which one you'd like to be on if we could not appoint you to both not necessarily okay wherever you you folks would think I would do okay the best job your, your honor I have a question with what Braden was asked ask, asking on what we were provided with it shows that you're an applicant for Board of Adjustment Health and Human Services Planning and zoning and public arts. So, which of those do you really want to be considered for? The arts or health and human services. Okay. I'm, I'm a little confused about how that happened because I was only given two options when I applied. But okay, I think <laughs> Thank you. Okay. The, the human resources would be very helpful, and I think the name health and human services is a little bit um, confusing, <clears throat> possibly. Um, about for what they um, exactly what that board does and okay. so we've got somebody and, and right that's here also audience. part of what I meant by being underprepared because mm -hmm. I did not contact Jennifer to talk about the nature of the position I simply read what was online no mm -hmm. worries it, I think it, it, oh, go ahead. it's okay we've got somebody right here in the audience this gentleman uh, with the ball cap right up front mm -hmm. can uh, chat with you a little bit about that okay but yeah no it, yeah it's it's easy to assume what that what they do and so um okay great thank you yeah, yeah thank you. one more question actually um in your bio area um one of the things that you had stated was that you're active on social media and have begun to have a handle on the feeling of the community could you elaborate on that a little bit more what have you seen or heard or, or Okay, sure. Um, I've just been paying attention in general to um, comments. I do comment some, but most of the times I'm just looking at what other people say because I'm relatively new to Apache Junction, so I'm just trying to get the feel of what people are thinking by what they post online. Yeah. No. Anyone else? All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. <clears throat> that wasn't so bad, was it? <laughs> <laughs> Samuel Graves. Uh, he has a letter in here, Your Honor. He's unable to attend it. Oh, okay. Uh, Sherry Hall. Cheryl Hall, excuse me. Your Honor, as, as Cheryl's coming forward, could I ask a quick question? Um, do we know, was there any information, Jennifer, on Siri? Gerstner, in terms of? She currently serves on the Health and Human Services Board, and all of the applicants were called and emailed th uh, Thursday and Friday of last week just to remind them of this. As far as I knew, she was going to be present. Okay. Um, but I work, she may have gotten stuck at work. Okay, very good. Thank you. Your Honor, can I ask Joel a quick question? All right. Because, Joel, because Siri, I don't think she was before, or if she was working for New, New Leaf at the pr prior, now that New Leaf is our domestic violence shelter, is that considered a conflict that she's on that commission? <clears throat> Mr. Mayor, um, Ms. Evans, I'd have to know the structure of the corporate entity, so I, it's hard to answer that question, but if it's if it's one that applies <clears throat> for uh, for funding, and she happens to be on it, then yes. 
So she would just have to recuse down. herself. She has to conflict <laughs> off on uh, the vote. On anything, basically. Uh, that could be a problem if you're combining, yeah. if you have like 10 agencies that want to get funds, then she's going to have to balance it. She'd then have input on all the conversations, and that would be influencing a decision for which she probably would have a conflict. However, I'd have to look at all the uh, information before I can make that uh, opinion. Okay, so prior, when she was originally appointed <clears throat> to that, what do we, is, is there something that we do that we would go back and ask her? I, I understand, I mean, health and human services typically meet the one or a couple of times a year, but not regularly. So between now and the time they meet again, does the city need to find out if, I mean, New Leaf hasn't applied, but they're also new to the community. If they haven't applied, then there's no conflict. Okay. But <clears throat> even, can I add to that? Even though they've <clears throat> taken over CAFA, which has applied and is a current funder, or a fundee, rather? No, they didn't the last time. Well, if she's an employee, yeah. um, and there's a connection on how she gets paid her uh, salary, then that could be a problem. But this is the first I've heard of it, but usually I don't hear about conflicts until mm -hmm. it's a conflict, so. Mm -hmm. oh, it's a <laughs> well, if that, if the age, if, if, big if, she is employed, but the agency has not applied for funding. Then there's no conflict. Okay. And, right. and then no also, connection. did you, just for clarification, did you say that um, she would have to conflict out of all the conversations and discussions, or if she worked for an agency that did apply, only she would only have to recuse herself for the discussion on that no. part, or how, what would, it, it, the, all of it, right? I think yeah. it'd be very difficult for someone on right. the commission to not have input on that particular one okay. when in their mind they're thinking, well, wait, okay. they really should be getting this, mm -hmm. so they might have an influence on the other uh, dollar amounts, yeah. and, and who's gonna get picked. So obviously we try to avoid that, but it can happen, like yes. something new that comes up, it could happen, okay. Yes. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay, sure. <clears throat> sorry about that. That's all right. Um, thank you, Mr. Mayor and council members for the opportunity to come up here and, and apply for the, either the library or the parks and rec on commissions. Uh, I am a relatively, well, very recent um, Apache Junction resident. Uh, I moved back from California about six months ago, but I'm a longtime Arizona resident before my California stint. So. I'm from the East Valley. I've lived in um, Tempe and Mesa most of my life and just recently found a place here in Apache Junction. Uh, and I'm really liking living in this area. I'm really in love with um, riding my bicycle around and seeing the mountains. So I'm, I'm getting a huge kick out of being able to feel like I'm more in the desert than I've been in any of the other places in Arizona I've lived. I am interested in, I actually wanted to apply for the uh, Citizens Leadership uh, uh, Institute, but there wasn't an opening. And so I said, well, I'll apply for a position. And, and so that's why I decided to go ahead and apply. And for, for the, the skill sets that I have, I think library or parks and rec is probably the best fit for me. I don't have a background in real estate other than owning it. And um, most of my, I do use libraries. I do use uh, parks and recs offerings. So that's something that I have an actual uh, personal connection to because I've used those surfaces before and I've, I've felt a connection to what I liked about them and what I would like to change about them. And that's one of the reasons why those were the two that I applied for. Uh, my background is in human resources, mostly in training and development. I like to call it the fun part of HR. <laughs> and uh, um, I, I've worked on engagement uh, drives. I've run, I've worked on recognition drives. I've worked on developing training and um, content, delivering training content. I have a broad experience in all of those areas. And uh, I am currently looking for a job in that area. And um, so right now I have lots of time. Eventually I probably will have a little bit more time devoted to that, but those, but neither library or Parks and Rec felt like it was such an overload that I wouldn't be able to handle the, the required work to make, to be an effective um, committee member. Do you have any questions for me? Yes. 
<clears throat> okay, you've applied for library board and parks and rec, so these questions you'll get asked a little bit of both. Okay. Uh, for the library board, have you spoken with uh, the library director, Pam, or San Sansi Brown? Either no, one? I just recently had a chance to get my library card and actually walk through the library and see what offerings okay. they had available. I was quite struck with the breadth of things that they have available. I especially like the seed library and the book club sets that they have, something I hadn't seen in other libraries that I've been a member of. So I thought that they had a really nice breadth of things that they had available. And then I also walked past some of the resource rooms and saw the workforce, it looks like a workforce development little room um, that they have available. And obviously I have a, an interest in that kind of an area, in that area based on my background. Okay. Have you attended any library board meetings? No. I've only been in the city for about three months. Okay. Uh, as, far, as far as parks and recs are concerned, ha again, have you gone and spoken uh, with Liz Langenbach, the director, or any other department people? No, not yet. Okay. Um, have you been to the multi-gen center? Uh, I have not been there. Okay. Have you gone on any ride-alongs with any park rangers? No, I did not even know that was something I could do. Um, have you reviewed uh, Parks and Rec's fee schedule? I have reviewed the budget. Uh, okay. I don't think I looked at the fee schedule, um, but that was, I assume that that is what feeds into the revenue for, yeah. um, for Parks and Rec. Okay. I had questions about where the revenue comes for the library, um, because it does, have it does have a revenue line, doesn't it? And uh, I know it's got an expense line, but I think it also has a revenue line. And I'm yeah. like, where, does they, where do they get those revenues? Oh, library fines, ah, <laughs> except okay. we don't have fines anymore. <laughs> Okay, thank you. All right. Over here. <clears throat> Your Honor, I do have a question, but for Jennifer, is there a length of residency requirement to serve on this board? There are no length of residency requirements to serve on board or commissions, only to vote in the election. Thank you. <laughs> okay. What is your, just, excuse me. Go ahead, Go ahead Kristen. Real quick, I just um, wanted to ask what your preference was, if you had a, if you had a preference between the two. Probably library. <clears throat> that I'm wouldn't a, have been my guess. That's I'm why a, I I'm asked. a reader, so yeah, <laughs> library would probably be first. Thank you. Okay, Robert. Um, you had mentioned that you were going to apply for the Assistant uh, Leadership Institute, but they were they're filled up. If you were to be uh, appointed to one of these boards, would that deter you from applying to the next Citizen Leadership no, Institute? Would, it would so not. you would have it would be a way every to, intention to yeah. attend it. Yeah. The bald guy right behind you is the guy you want to see. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, anyone else? He's not <laughs> totally bald. Nope. Just Thank you very bald. much. Thank you. <laughs> I would have used the term cute. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but trying, you're trying to make me laugh here now. He can't go talk to CE. He's not an employee. Ron Krusner? Yvonne so, Cruiser. Cruiser? It's okay, Yvonne. He gets my name wrong, too. <laughs> Hi, my name's Yvonne Cruiser. I have been a resident of Apache Junction since 1989. My husband and I have had a business in town since 1988. Uh, we were very active several years ago, and then we both got second shift jobs, <laughs> which kind of affects being, being able to volunteer and stuff. I've applied for the Library Board and Parks and Rec and the Arts Commission. Um, library or Parks and Rec, either one, they kind of even out. The reason for those two boards specifically is our children got so much resource and help out of those two areas growing up here. Uh, our daughter was an employee of Parks and Recs from the time she was 15 till she was 19. Uh, so they're very kind of near and dear to my heart because they really help shape our kids. So any questions? Any questions out here? Cool. How about questions over here? Yes. Yeah. I have one question. So you have a business out of your house? We do. And do you have a city business license? We do. Thank you. <laughs> and it's all been approved. It's all been approved to run out of our house. Too. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> we 
<laughs> did that all legal like you're supposed to. <laughs> there are many people that do it right, but we have a few sometimes. Yeah, because we've, we've actually been working out of our she house since the mid-90s. So, yeah. I can't believe she said Good. That. Thank yeah. you. You're welcome. Okay. Anyone else? Your, your Honor? Yeah. Yes. Oh. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Um, do you currently have a library card? I, I you, do. I was going to say, I know you go to the library, see you there about every two weeks. But. I do have a library card. Okay. I have and never not had a library card since okay. we lived here. Awesome. Um, so in any of these uh, boards, what is something that you feel that you could bring to the table? Is there maybe a different like event or, or opportunity that we're not doing that you'd like to see us work towards? I think that's part of becoming the board is finding out more of the inside workings and just seeing what because I because we have been kind of out of touch between our second shift jobs and then I was taking care of my dad for several years. Um, right now, I'd like to get back in and see what they're doing. I know they've always been pretty forward in stuff that they've done since, for as long as I've known. Yes. Yvonne, I have a question for you. Yes, um, Since I know who you are, <laughs> and for years you were a, an accountant with Pinnell County. Yes. Yvonne has an extensive accounting background. Also government. Yeah. <laughs> if uh, you weren't appointed to one of these boards, would you be interested at all in the Municipal Property Corporation? which is a, a board that requires people who, they have to fill out a, a, an extensive annual report and <laughs> dealing with bonds and everything for the city. Test my skills, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> so that, similar to grant reporting is what yes. you're saying. Is that something you would sure. be interested in? Okay. Sure. That's one of the little notes I had here for just for a, an afterthought for you. Yes. Thanks. Tess. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. <clears throat> okay, Jamie Landstra. Lanza. 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 Sorry. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, pronounced Jaime. Uh, Jaime. Yeah. Thank you very much. Good evening for allowing me to participate in this process. Uh, my name is Jaime Lanza. I'm originally from La Paz, Bolivia. I moved to Apache Junction from Leavenworth, Kansas, 20 years ago. In the recent years, I noticed very positive progress in the city, which one of the reasons I decided to be part of this board. Also, my strength is to follow policies and procedures. In order that helped me to, on my decision-making process also recommendations. Every time I'm gonna make a recommendations, always gonna be with a goal that will benefit the city as well as the citizens. And, and I hope you give me this opportunity. Um, that's all I got, unless you got any questions for me. Thank you again. Anyone else got questions? Yes, I do. Yes, go ahead. <clears throat> Mr. Lanza, have you uh, sat down with uh, Larry Kirsch or anyone else in uh, the planning and, and development department and gone over what this, the requirements are for P and Z? No. What the, okay. Have you attended any of the P and Z meetings? No. Okay. Can you tell me what a CUP is? No. And have you looked at the city codes? Some of the city codes. Okay. All right. Uh, yes. One of my forte is always on always believe you, you have to learn the procedure, you have to learn the policies, and there's a, uh, including the law, and I uh, always like to do that, even though it's boring, but I like to do it. Okay, thank you. <laughs> sure. Okay, anyone else? Yes, Your Honor. Yes. Um, I'll ask you the, the same question that I've asked the other uh, applicants for planning and zoning. Uh, how do you feel about uh, council going against the planning and zoning recommendation? Uh, always based on, I'm a very practical individual. I have to base, I got to have the facts. I don't let influence my emotions. If I got the facts, everything I do, my, base my decision. 
And uh, that's what I will, I will be doing. Great. Thank you. Sure. <coughs> uh, I'm going to ask one here now. Um, <clears throat> would you be interested in the Industrial Development Authority with your background and information? Yes, I will. Yes, I will. Uh, yeah. <coughs> okay. All right. Anyone have any? Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. M Mr. McGraw, Michael McGraw. I was going to say I didn't see. Nope. Okay. Jeffrey Michelle. Mitchell. 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 Good evening, Mayor and Council Members. So I'm Jeffrey Mitchell. Um, I wanted to first of all thank you for appointing me last year as a member of the Health and Human Services Board. Um, so that's one of the ones I'm seeking to apply for this year. I think last year the big question was, who is this guy? You know, so new to Apache Junction. Um, now I've been here for another year, so I think a lot of you have seen me around the community doing different things. A um, couple of key things that I've done um, personally, I was a graduate of the uh, Citizens Leadership Institute with Al Bravo. Um, I also did the Penal County's uh, Sheriff Posse with uh, Mark Lamb's program. Um, I am part of the Rotary Club and did a couple of service projects through Rotary. Um, also was recently selected to be on the Rotary, of the Rotary Board of the Superstition Mountains because uh, basically just some of the projects I have did we're going to continue doing and um, you know it's Ed Shockley's old role doing the community outreach. And uh, also part of the Qantas Club. So, those are some different things. Um, again, the interests are the Health and Human Services Board first. Um, I'm also looking at planning and zoning. Not that I have experience, but Joel Stern recommended it to me based on conversations that we've had. And finally, public arts. So I'll open it up to any questions. We're still wondering who you are. It's just a little <laughs> bit of a... <laughs> Anyone have any questions? Yes, Your Honor. Yes. Um, I'll go ahead and start with P and Z um, and ask the same question of, of recommendations to counsel and how do you feel about us going against them? Well, I think um, when you appoint us to the boards and commissions, we got to do a lot of the legwork and homework. So I hope they were taken strongly, but at the end of the day, I'm not the elected official. So we would defer that decision to those who are elected. But at the end of the day, I hope they would be taken very strongly. Thank you. Uh, in regards to uh, Health and Human Services, um, you've been on there a, a year now, I believe, right? Yep. Okay. That's the incumbent. Um, what have you learned since being on Health and Human Services, and what do you think that we could do uh, better or different? Well, I learned a lot. Um, how much goes into the selection process for the funding, um, the money that's given from the city to the nonprofits. There's a lot that goes into that, um, reviewing the annual reports of all the applicants, uh, making sure there's a lot of accountability. And I think that um, there's a lot that we could do better. Um, just after making the presentation to council about the funding, I saw that there's a lot of need for more of an increased relationship. Um, I hope that as a board we will meet more frequently in the next year. I hope that we can have that meeting with council and the nonprofits and even the board as well. So there's a lot of things I think that could be improved. Just and, and seeing how the last year went. Um, also, just duplication of service efforts. We don't want to see that happening. Um, I'm encouraged personally, after talking with Darla at the Salvation Army, they're not doing the same meal distribution that Genesis is doing. They're deferring that. And that was an indirect response to a lot of the duplication of efforts. So I think we got a lot of things that we can really do better, and I, you know, just in that year of experience. Thank you. Anyone else down here? Yes. Jeff, I want to first start out by thanking you for what you've been doing on health and human services. I think you're doing an excellent job on that. <clears throat> as far as uh, planning and zoning is concerned, have you sat down with Larry or anyone in development services and talked to them about what it would entail? I have not. Okay. How many meetings have you attended of planning and zoning? have not attended those, although I will say that after attending several city council meetings, I know how important it is. I've right. seen it. It's probably the biggest matter of debate amongst the council every time we, we see those issues come up. <laughs> <laughs> and can you tell me what a CUP is? I believe that is a conditional use permit. And have you looked at the city codes 
that apply to planning and development, planning and zoning? Well, I, I know that they're pretty extensive. Like they get into like what's an R12 versus an R10 or, you know. So I don't know those off the top of my head, but I would do the homework if I were selected for it. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? Well, I, I do have one and for the arts. Uh, what is your interest in art? Well, it really stems from a lot of my background in Illinois. So I worked with a lot of artists personally. I'm a financial advisor with Prudential. And so artists are independent contractors. And they're great at their craft, but they're not so great at handling other matters. Like their brain is totally one-sided. They don't know how to deal with the analytical stuff. So I had a lot of artists as clients, and I worked with Consensus Chicago and helping them fundraise and just seeing the artist community there. Who, so, was, who was that? Consensus Chicago. It's like a arts community, a communal arts community. So they had all kinds of things going there, like theater, plays, people doing different performances. It was a really cool, cool thing. But being a part of the focal point, um, I go to that meeting at the Chamber of Commerce pretty much every two weeks, every two months when we have it. And one of the goals that Mayor Surdy, or former Mayor Surdy suggested, sorry, was that the, the downtown be more walkable and that we do stuff like the Gilbert Art Walk and we really bring into account some of the things that we have that are our resources in the arts. So I'd love to see that expand. I'd love to see us do more for artists and highlight that. And, uh, you know, just it's a, I would be applying as somebody interested in the arts since I'm not a great artist myself. You talked about that a good bit when we first interviewed you. I, n I never forgot it. Yeah. Your, your history back east and with the arts and stuff. It was very interesting to listen to you. Yeah, I did do speech and theater in the past, too, so there is that. <laughs> okay, no more questions? Thank you very much. All right, thank you very much. And I know uh, Mr. Mohammed's not in today, so I'll skip to uh, uh, Moore. Moore. Terrell. Terrell. Oh, whoops. You jumped ahead. <laughs> How y'all doing this, this evening? Um, Terrell Moore, and uh, I'm actually going for Parks and Rec. Right. But after hearing some of the things that's going on, I, actually, I wanted to put in consideration for a uh, library council also. Uh, and the reason why I want to do that is because, uh, even for me, I'm a, a military uh, war vet. I was in an Air Force Reserve. Uh, and just, and I was a uh, security forces. Um, and one of my main focus is really just keeping youth within, right, as we get older and getting a better understanding of just what life is really about. For me, I've had no guidance, so trying to be the one to guide is what I'm actually trying to do within my lifetime. Um, the, the cool thing that, as Jeff has said, that uh, being on certain uh, uh, services as uh, being Rotarian also, um, we're looking at really trying to step things up uh, with our generation to show the future generations of what we can do and know that as we're doing the same thing that, that's been followed by tradition, uh, they also can have a better understanding. Um, one thing I really do like about Park and Recs is just what they have going. Uh, in the sense of making the, the dog part and also having the ability to do more in a sense that if helping with the youth too and also helping with the, the older generations uh, and also with the library. I'm very impressed within the library on what they're doing to really be transparent, to bring up what is the basic you know, library, but then adding so much more. As with me going in, I noticed that they do have uh, a 3D printer. I have ideas. That's amazing because, again, as hitting levels like that, uh, on both levels, on with parks and recs, ideas are able to come into play uh, tremendously. And as the youth may not have much of a, a passion as being uh, them really being affected with the pandemic and trying to cope with it, we are the ones that actually try to be the guidance to really help them out. I, I really do think that I, I, I can put forth in anything that comes to mind to help them out, or if I'm not able to help them out, actually uh, look towards uh, my peers uh, to where I could get a better understanding and actually teach them too. Any questions? Yes, Kelly. Um, Mr. Moore, give us a little more information about your background, personally. So, with, with my background, uh, uh, I'm 
born in Alaska, born and raised in Alaska, moved down to Washington State. Uh, I came down here to uh, Arizona because, uh, again, with me not having an understanding of life, after getting out the military, uh, I went through a struggle. So uh, as me getting the proper help through the, uh, the VA system over in Phoenix, uh, during the time frame of them having the negative impacts and all the, the hearsays, um, I am an uh, individual to say that they, they helped me out tremendously where I'm, I got my uh, bachelor's degree over at ASU uh, within these last couple of years and really getting on my feet and now looking to really run. Uh, um, what else? I have three kids uh, here uh, with uh, uh, my fiance, uh, Sarah Snyder, uh, and then also have three kids up in Washington State too. And actually, again, bringing that monogamy together to where they know that there's a better understanding as we continue to live and continue to understand uh, more about just life in general. Thank, Thank you. you for your service. Thank mm -hmm. you. Yes. <clears throat> Excuse me. Mr. Moore, um, have you met with Liz Langenbach or anyone else with Parks and Rec and I, talked about that serving on that board, their commission? I did a quick brief um, uh, email to uh, Liz uh, to, to show interest as I was taking the CLI, um, but really uh, the her and I's conversations are more about other things that are going on in the community uh, with uh, uh, a couple of events that's coming up. So to really uh, zero in on uh, parks and recs, I have not. Okay. Have you toured the multi-gen center? I have, yes. Okay. Have you gone on any ride-along or gone to any of the other parks? How many parks do we have in AJ? Oh. Okay. How many parks? I'm going to throw it out there, you know, because, <laughs> again, it's a good question. Um, I, I would say four. Where I could be wrong, but I think four is a good number. How many? Nine? Nine. Plus five. I was <laughs> we need more. <laughs> we need more. That's the end. Yeah. We need more. We need <laughs> have you have you reviewed the fee schedule for Parks and Rec? I have not. Um, to learn more about what is needed is something I'm looking to do. Uh, I know I'm right now with me being employed over at uh, a local Walgreens uh, and also doing some other stuff. Uh, I haven't really seen what is needed within Park and Recs, uh, but that is something that I'm really looking to actually accomplish. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? Mm -hmm. uh, I don't so much have a question as just uh, two things I want to point out is while you were talking about the amazing services that our library provides, and I 100% wholeheartedly agree, I couldn't help notice the library director right behind you who I'm not entirely sure didn't start crying from just pure joy <laughs> over everything that you're talking about. So way to go. Um, but also just uh, to commend you, uh, since I've gotten to know you more and more, you've been a actively involved in any way, shape, or form. Uh, the only thing I could say differently was I wish you were a Kiwanian instead of a Rotarian, but we'll talk about that later. <laughs> thank you, thank you. So, thank you. Unless you want to yeah, say something else. both. No. Thank you. I, I, you know what? I have a quick question. Okay. <clears throat> Where do you see yourself in 10 years out here? That's a big question. Um, I mean, you're new. You're new. You're on some I, boards. You, you did the Citizen Lease Institute. You, you seem to be a go-getter. Yes. And, and that's the thing. Is I am a go-getter. Um, I've, I've fallen, though. Uh, with me, just uh, with the experience of, 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 of living, um, of I mean, having hurt feelings and stuff like that, and trying to endure uh, as me being unbalanced, uh, understanding that that's part of me, and I'm able to grow, there's so much more to do. In 10 years, I would love to possibly be where you guys are at. Um, if not, look to do more. Uh, if not me, <clears throat> help those who want to be in the same position or help guide. Um, I, I, I want to write a book. Uh, I do have a fun fact, and I hate to say it, but I'm going to say it. Um, if you go to Google and put in my first name, <laughs> I pop up. And so sure. having, having that opportunity just, just by that, the sky's the limit. So I'm hoping to, as um, uh, the opportunities have been there in 10 years, I can make a difference here in a package junction uh, because I'm, uh, I've devoted myself here to a package junction in any way possible. Yeah. Thank you. I just yes. have a comment. 
you know, and listening to you wanting to uh, influence and engage with uh, children and children's programs and kind of create a pathway for them. Something comes to mind, especially with your background. Um, <coughs> there's an organization called Eagle Pathway, and what they do is um, they help uh, foster children that have aged out of foster care, and a lot of them have, have become homeless. Mm -hmm. um, the majority of uh, children that are that age out do end up on the streets, and I just see you being such a leader in something like that. I think these boards are great, but I think you have a lot of potential to really influence and impact the lives of children that need somebody like you. Thank you, thank you. Um, even if, as, if, if I'm able to get that information, as you guys see, as me being a go-getter, I'm willing to go for it. Why not? Thank you again. Thank you, Charles. Okay, thank you. Okay, Frank Schoenbach. Shane. 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 <laughs> Good evening, Mr. Mayor, Vice Mayor, Council Members. Frank Schoenbach, uh, applying for rec, a park and rec. I'm an incumbent there and also interested in board of uh, uh, planning and zoning. I've been on park and rec now going on six years. Uh, Interesting part about that is I came on to get the glory as flat iron was completed without having put any of the preliminary work into it. <laughs> I got to be in the picture. Uh, but I've been involved in the dog park from the get-go, and that's been an interesting project uh, as we near completion now and finalization. I think the, the most important thing we do as board members is ask questions, trying to find out you know, what is really the issue and how can we best support the park and rec department in advancing that issue. Uh, my wife and I are, unfortunate, are fortunate to have a medical advantage for our Social Security, so we get free uh, gym membership at the multi-generational center. So we are there three days a week, which is also a good way for a board member to keep an eye on the, you know, the system. Uh, Jamie has asked us to be more involved as board members, and that's one of my contributions to her, her effort. As far as planning and zoning goes, I've been on the Board of Adjustment now six years, I think five years, and we've had some interesting cases, and there again, the only thing we have there is to ask questions and to find out what the real issue is and how to get down to resolving it. All those uh, cases involve research, both looking up things on the internet as well as going out to the, to the site itself and seeing what the actual physical situation is. So uh, as planning and zoning going, you've got a couple incumbents, I believe, are doing a good job. Uh, mostly I want to throw my hat on the ring like I have every time it comes along, and sooner or later I hope they get lucky. <laughs> but um, for, for tonight, really, I'm looking for a park and rec uh, uh, reappointment. Uh, Liz uh, values my services on the commission, and I like being there. Any questions? All that work on the dog park, and I don't remember you being in the picture for it. Uh, it was a sad day that day. Uh, there were things going on. <laughs> we can Photoshop yeah. you in it. Okay. Yeah, well, that's okay. I'll, I'll be there for the uh, grand opening, I guarantee you. All right. All right, well, thank you. Always good to see you. <laughs> thank you. Thanks for your service, Frank. Okay, Mr. Schroeder. <clears throat> Good evening, George Schroeder, 244, for West Virginia. I'm a resident of 40 years here, so I am applying, I'm applying for zoning and planning and zoning. <clears throat> I, got, I got a lot of great qualifications for this position. <clears throat> Leadership. Boy, as soon as somebody stands up and wants to lead or, you know, you know, do something about something, you get slapped down. Oh, you're crazy. You can't do it. You're wrong. <laughs> I mean, it's a whole gauntlet. Uh, to our, our applicants for mental health and our resident psychologist, AJ and the city council, and don't be offended. It's kind of a nice thing. Reminds me of <clears throat> the world according to GARP. <laughs> there, there's a leadership for you. The guy has his hands full, and what does he do? Whoosh, 
Let's take it out of the picture. Let's take it out of town. Let's see what's run up the flagpole, see what happens. Well, that's, that's AJ. <laughs> we got, what, 60, 70 years of that. And it shows in our neighborhoods. Some are not doing so good. Some are doing better than others. Uh, like the lady said, it's wonderful to look out. Tomahawk and the horses and the trails, wonderful. Well, of course, not, I don't want to be negative, but then you come back to my neighborhood, there's good people there, hard workers. They can't afford the new housing that's coming in. They get $25,000, $30,000 income. Really? So what do we do? We're going we're gonna to give them cardboard houses to live in? And that's all they can afford? Or on the streets with pup tents? We can do better than that. We can. We really can. So, <clears throat> leadership. Ever since I'm a kid, I got like 15 years landscape and design. Before I graduated high school, I had a two-year degree in ornamental horticulture. Five years of carpentry. Just what my grandfather, grandfather taught us. Plumbing, electrical. Um, 12 years of classical music. Never got a second. In 12 years, I never got a second place medal. We went all over the United States. I have, in case you're thinking I'm goofing, we, I have records to prove it with my name on it. Now, when you play with 120 people, I assure you, that's discipline. Discipline like most of you have never seen in your life. We got an invitation to play for the Naval Music Cadets in Hattiesburg, Mississippi. At seventh grade and eighth grade, we were playing junior and senior university college music. We did it better than they did. This is not a, this is not a, a maybe. We got awards for it, big awards, national awards. There, there's other things I can tell you. I'm a, I'm a lifelong thespian, coin collector, stamp collector. Some of you saw my, a few of my stamps. They're beautiful. They're fine, finest in the world. So I know what fine is. I also know what it's like to be without. My father died when I was six. His father died. My grandfather on the other side died within three months of each other. My kids, my, my, my brothers, and my, bro my mother, my brothers, my sisters, uh, two of them are here. One is in New York. All the rest are dead. Dead. I got no one to turn to. <laughs> so I've been homeless four times in East Valley. <clears throat> So to our resident psychologist, don't tell me I'm crazy. The chief, bit, he, the chief beat you to it. <laughs> hey, Your Honor, I have a question. Yes. Yes. If the CUPs were turned back over to council, how would you feel about that? And I, I appreciate what Planning and Zoning has done with the cops. I do. And I didn't want to take too much time, but okay, so we go there. Okay. So the last one with, and I don't know if I can mention any names, but the one with the hitching post. That was a cluster. That really didn't turn out well at all. And by the way, I don't sue people. How many times have I told you that? I don't sue people. I look at the case, because I used to be in law enforcement as, a, as an investigator, <clears throat> not an official investigator, but that, that is one of my titles, investigate things, make sure they go right. Very, very high profile job. So you want every little bit of information you can get in a cup you know, it pertains to each individual, each individual business, how they're going to run it, when they're going to run it, who they're going to run it with, who they're going to run it for. Mm -hmm. I, I feel that the, 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 the planning and zoning on the hitching post really got it wrong. It kept coming back, kept coming back. Then we had to make, you know, rules and ordinances against him. He didn't comply. And he did comply. And that wasn't good enough. It was time ran out. I mean, that was really, really bad. But there are others that... That went pretty smooth. Have I been to a planning and zoning board meeting? Yes. I went to the last one with the Havenly and the one down there at the uh, Broadway and uh, the trail. Um, I, you know, sometimes you think I'm like Mikey. I hate everything. No, I'm, I'm not. I thought the first housing um, uh, planning uh, apartments was very nice. It's a great fit for that area. But the new ones at Havenly, if we go through that, we're spending money to initially 
start up that whole, this whole area over here. And that's what the general plan is about. I think that's wrong. We'll work on that later. But why would we want to develop all that when my neighborhood, my streets have not been touched in 40 years? <coughs> now, it, I know what you're saying. If I'm on the board, I'm not going to stand there you know, on a you know, high and mighty and say my streets come first. I'm not going to do that. That wouldn't be right. That wouldn't be right to the people of AJ. I'm there for everybody, just like these gentlemen said. I'm there for everybody. I think your horses, Chip, deserve as much attention as a dog park, as, as my sidewalks, as, as a flag at Iron, Flat Iron Park. Everything counts with our city. Mm -hmm. But we have people that are so entrenched in their personal uh, endeavors, they're not really thinking about other people. They're not. I'm, I'm telling you, I'm a Libra. I go back to zero. If I go too far this way, I gotta come back. If I go this way, I gotta come back. It's just, it's just me. And that, that is really a good point. When you say leadership, I, I sat outside Al's class once one time. It would suggest lots of talking and listening and, and note taking. And at the end of the day, you're, you're learning how to work with other people. Great, I've done it, been there, done that. Of course, they don't always like what I have to say. But I listen. How long have I been coming? I've been coming here for almost 15 years. Eight of the last ones. Very intense, very focused, very opinionated. <laughs> but I'm here. I'm, I'm concerned. How many people come up to these meetings like I do? Not many. That's right. And I'm here, and I'm talking, I'm talking, I'm talking until I'm blue in the face. When's my streets going to be done? Six years, it was two years. Four years, it was two years. Two years ago, it was two years. Today, it's two years. <laughs> really? I don't, think, I don't think we need to be spending money developing a, a corridor when the rest of the people are still, you know, 40 years behind you. Okay? It's wrong. Let's get everybody on the same page, playing for the same team, talking about the same things. And, you know, depression and, and our... And our our folks that applied already. I can't think of anyone that's more depressed than I am. <laughs> I've been dealing with it for so long. Right? I, I don't have enough to do. Mr. Schroeder was over at my house. He saw what I got to do. Other people have been over at my house. They see what I got. <laughs> see what I'm doing. I'm doing it by myself. Okay? I'm, putting my, I'm rebuilding my entire house. <laughs> of course, I don't have many friends. Nobody's, nobody's standing up to help me. I'm doing it anyway. I'm taking care of my girl. She's 84 years old. You know, she's got, you know, progressing along. Mr. Schroeder, with all due respect, know, could, we ask the, could we ask uh, our mayor if uh, we could ask questions? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Thank you, sir. I just want to give a full picture. I'm not just up here for a fat head. Uh, I yes. do have uh, two questions, Your Honor. Uh, the first one is the same I've asked every other planning and zoning app, uh, applicant, is your thoughts on uh, council going against the PNZ recommendation? Well, I, I thought I answered that. I, I, I don't have a problem going against it, because that's all we're supposed to do is investigate, seek the facts, um, and it, nothing political. Absolutely nothing political. I, I detest that. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, and then the second question is, uh, at, at various times in different meetings, you've been pretty vocal uh, against various members of staff. Uh, if appointed to the board, you'd have to work with those very members of staff and, and publicly criticizing them or, or uh, isn't necessarily always the best choice. How, how could you work with them now, given that history? Again, that's like the world according to Garp. I'm a bad guy. He's a good guy. <laughs> Whose opinion? I got the facts. I know what I'm talking about. <clears throat> I do, absolutely. More than most people you can possibly think of. Now, I am a leader, which means, yeah, I go right to the edge. <laughs> right to the edge. And, and, and there's been times when I went over, not just here, but hmm, other times, many times in my life. And I paid for it, but I thought it was worth it because I'm here today. We're going to give you answers that you need that you can't find anywhere else. 
Okay, anyone else have questions? Over here. <coughs> well, I would just thank you for your candidacy. You're, you've been very open and honest about a lot of things. Thank you. Okay, Christopher Simpson. <clears throat> Mayor Wilson, council members, thank you for inviting me today. Uh, my name is Christopher Simpson. I just a little bit about me. I am an East Valley native. I was born and raised in Mesa, Arizona. Went to Mesa High School, graduate of Arizona State. There I did inter interdisciplinary studies, bachelor's degree, both in sociology and in communications. I then moved out here where I lived from 2002 to 2009. 2009, I was accepted into a physician assistant program in New York City. Moved out there and completed that where I worked in emergency medicine. By way of Oregon, I have returned back, and I currently practice in emergency medicine, both in Phoenix, Queen Creek, and here in Apache Junction. I am applying for the Health and Human Services Board, um, and have any questions. Okay, yes. Um, where is Envision Healthcare located? In Vision Healthcare is actually a national conglomerate. Uh, I work for emergency pe emergency professional services. Uh, we are a group of providers, physicians, physician assistants, nurse practitioners that are then staffed into an emergency rooms locally through Banner Hospitals. Uh, okay, so this group Banner. is with Banner University, Banner Ironwood, Banner Goldfield, and Banner Australia. Okay, thank you. Great, thank you. Um, what is your experience with some of our various uh, community nonprofits or social service agencies? Um, I, I think it's quite extensive. Uh, in the emergency room, we are kind of the failsafe to the community. Um, so we extensively deal with the underserved populations, uh, the homeless, the uh, drug abuse addicts, mm -hmm. and we have to try and get them resources. Um, so I'm luckily to be assisted by social workers and case managers, but we are the medical standpoint to that. So I do see these patients every single day and make referrals from there. Thank you. And then have you ever been to one of our uh, Health and Human Services meetings? I have not, but I've watched the last two years on video. Awesome. Um, so I am very well aware of what the budgetary restrict or constraints are within the, uh, within the commission. Um, yes. Thank you. Okay, anyone else over here? Yes. Just one short question. Have you uh, reviewed the annual report to see what all our city is looking for and what they do for our health and human services? Um, I have not actually reviewed the report, but through watching the videos, I am aware of the local nonprofits that are, um, that they are doing the budget for or making recommendations for the budget for. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Don't see any more. Thank you very much. Thank you, guys. Thanks. Um, Sandra Snyder? Sarah. Sarah. She would. Sarah. All right. She. Good evening. I'm going to make this. Well, yes, go ahead. I'm much shorter than all of them. <laughs> <laughs> so. um, a little bit about me. I am an Arizona native as well, pretty much. East Mesa, Meridian and Broadway. Um, and then my first job was out here in Apache Junction. All my schooling was in Mesa. And my professional background, well, I have my master's degree in business. And then pretty much it's been in finance. So corporate finance in Scottsdale. Um, a couple years ago, just, well, just shy of the pandemic, I decided to leave Scottsdale because I was tired of driving to and from, spending all my time in the car. Um, I also wanted to just be more involved locally. So I worked in healthcare, in home health, became a certified dementia practitioner. Um, but even then, it was still located in Mesa, and I wanted to be really involved in Apache Junction. So I left that, um, wanted to be working in the city that I live in, which I've been here for seven years. And so I started at Terra Diddles, 
with the main purpose, even though, yes, I have my MBA, I have a corporate background, and yet I went to be a server at Teradiddles. Um, my main objective there was really, no offense, Chip, but I want to be mayor one day. Very big aspirations <laughs> to become mayor in the long future. Um, but really, my main goal at Teradiddles was just to get to know locals. Um, just talk to them on a daily basis, see what they felt about the community, what they wanted to change about the community, and just really just welcome them with an open heart in the community. I do serve on the board of directors for my own HOA. Um, and then just this past Monday, which I did have to email about because I did initially plan for planning and zoning. However, I accepted a job over at Road Haven as the executive administrative assistant to their board of directors. And their meetings are every second and fourth Tuesday of the month, which are the same as planning and zoning. Um, so I am open to a board. Um, I don't necessarily know if I feel that one really sparks my interest over another because I think they're all very beneficial. Um, every part of them do have to work together to make our city run efficiently. Um, and I, I love the growth in our city. I'm all for the growth, but I do want to keep the scenic views as well. Um, I want that small town feel, but with growth, just not high towers. Um, and that's me. Any questions? Yeah. Um, the only person hated more than city council is an HOA board, so thank you. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I know, and now I represent two. Yeah. Every yeah, thought, day. Yeah. Um, you indicated, or, or at least we have indicated here, that you have a business in AJ being Terry Diddles, but you're, did, are you a part owner of some capacity that I'm not aware of? At Terry Diddles? No. No. You're just, you just work there. Yes, okay. I worked there. Worked. I started as a server and then about a month later became a supervisor. Okay, perfect. Um, and then um, in your, please state why you would like to be appointed to the board and commission, and you kind of touched a little bit on it, um, but you stated that you have uh, much to offer in terms of general knowledge and how citizens feel about their local government. Um, can you expand a little bit on that, about things you might have seen or heard or or what you feel you, you bring to the table with that knowledge? Yeah. Um, as far as what I've heard, I do follow, um, I would say some meetings. I follow every page of social media. I am not a poster on it, but I do follow um, for like the AJ info. I follow the police. I follow all of our, I follow our parks and recs and um, you know, all of our pages the main city-owned Apache Junction outlets, I would say. Um, those I am a part of, and I do read all the information. As far as when going out, um, I do attend nearly every event um, just to talk and get to know my locals because I am a local as well. Um, and just know, you know, kind of here, I hear some of their concerns. Yes, I know there's always all opinions, um, as far as, you know, what they think about the new buildings or um, what changes they want to see, what they don't want to see. And I just try to be a positive advocate as far as knowing, yes, Apache Junction cares about the people, but we also have to maintain a city. You know, we have to know as far as future generations, what's going to help our future. Um, what's going to help with our children and what's going to help with our land. Um, there are more concerns than some just basic opinions, I would say. Uh, so it's just, I would say I more so read between the lines and try to find some truth in it. Um, and then just be a positive advocate as much as possible. Great. Thank you. Anyone else in here? Yes. Your Honor, <clears throat> Sarah, I'd like to ask you, um, you applied for planning and zoning, but because of your job, you can't uh, do this, that those same nights. Um, when we look at these boards and commissions, we need to start more and more as we grow to assign people 
who have experience or background or something in in those specific boards or commissions instead of just saying oh well we'll appoint right. somebody so i'd like you to tell me out of the nine boards and commissions that we're looking at <clears throat> which ones specifically that you would like us to consider you for besides pnc Well, um, I think Board of Adjustment would be a good fit, uh, just with having such um, a corporate background and needing to be in a room to make decisions. You have all your, I guess, evidence, and you kind of have to be an advocate and look at what is fair and honest. Um, that, that one would be a good board. Um, I would love park and recs. However, I know my fiance has applied for it and I don't want to kick him off of a board. <laughs> um, um, so, but that is something very intriguing to me as well. Um, just because I am very involved and love to be able to uh, bring the community together and, you know, really make sure people get out of their houses and just be involved in the community. Okay, the answering that you'd be interested in uh, Board of Adjustment, you said? Yeah. Okay, Th the job of the Board of Adjustment is to listen to appeals and make decisions on zoning administrator decisions. So tell me, um, how would you know that? I mean, have you reviewed the zoning ordinances so you could make a... Um, I've reviewed the codes online um, I know when we were going through the CLI class, we went, I did attend a planning and zoning committee and then uh, was navigated, you know, I, I then went home and navigated online and able to look at all the codes. Uh, I read through it, I, I could not memorize them, but I, I have read we, them. None of yeah. us can. Have you gone to development services and spoken with Larry Kirsch or anyone else there? No. Okay, thank you. I think your answer for Board of Adjustments was spot on. I think that's exactly what you need. You need to be in tune, you need to be involved, and you need to be fair and balanced. I loved that answer, and it's probably one of the best answers I've ever heard for that board. Thank you. Anyone else? Oh, I have one. Um, would you be interested in the Industrial Development Authority? I am not very familiar with that board. But if it was a way to serve my city, then I would research it and become av available. Number two best answer, right? Yeah. Yes. yeah. <clears throat> like yeah. I said, I know I have to start somewhere in order to become mayor someday. So <laughs> I think you I got, got to work. It's, I got the feeling I that's going to happen. There, I, so. I think her and her fiance are going to go head to head for mayor. And no, no, <laughs> no. I got it. <laughs> I think we need to let him take the mic again just to, you know, rebut that. You cross No, he'll, he'll let me take it. Okay, anyone else? All right, thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> Frank? Sperna. Brenda? Sperna. Sperna? Good evening. Thank you for having me here. It's Frank Smyrna. I appreciate you all taking the time this afternoon and this evening. Uh, my wife and I moved to Apache Junction about four years ago. Prior to that, we lived in uh, Tempe for about 30 years. Uh, I retired from Motorola. I worked at General Motors in the Chicagoland area, and we moved down here. Uh, we got a taste of the warm weather in July of 19. 90 when it was 122 degrees and it sure beats the 50 below in Chicago so we moved here <laughs> so uh, as far as experience goes I don't really don't have experience in that particular field my background is uh, in the su supply chain field I'm a master planner at Motorola and I was a production planner with General Motors Corporation 
but I think that having a, a fresh point of view on, you know, on any type of council or assembly type of position really brings some, you know, fresh ideas to it. So uh, I thought that coming down here, I would give a chance to uh, give back to the community and that's why I'm here. Okay, anyone have any questions? Yes. So I'll ask you the same questions I have everyone else because that's only fair. Have you spoken with Liz Langenbach at Parks and Rec, the director, to find out what the job would entail? I'm sorry, ma'am, what was that? What did you say? I think you're an incumbent. Right. Oh, you're an incumbent. No, you're an applicant. I miss what? No, he's no. an applicant, Your Honor. Yeah, the next one. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. I was going to say, I didn't think yeah, so. Yeah, all right, I'm sorry. Okay. <clears throat> Have you spoken with Liz Langenbach, the Parks and Rec director, to find out what that no. position in entails? Have you been to the multi-gen center and toured it no. or any of the parks? Okay. Have you reviewed the fee schedule for the Parks and Rec department? No. Okay. Just want to find out. Thank you. All right. Anyone else over here? No over here? Yes, go ahead. Um, in your application, it said Veteran U.S. Army and stained glass. Yes. Would you ever consider being part of the Arts Commission? I'm sorry, ma'am, I can barely hear you. Oh, I'm sorry. Would you consider being part of the Arts Commission with your stained, yes, I was. stained I, uh, glass I, background? Yeah, I do. I, uh, um, I'm a stained glass artist, and I own my own business, and I work out of my home. So I've been doing that for about 10 years. And I do appreciate the arts, and uh, so yes, I would consider that. That would be very, you know, very good as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, I think you would fit well. You stole my question. Oh, <laughs> God, I'm sorry. <laughs> Anyone else? Uh, yes. Uh, have you been able to attend any of our various community events, uh, uh, parades, festivals, things like that? Uh, the parades, yes. Uh, before the COVID started, yeah. And um, I'd like to see those continue because I think that really helps the community. Uh, I think as far as Apache Junction is concerned, I think it's really a beautiful area. I mean, Tempe is no comparison whatsoever. I mean, you come out here and you can look around and you can just see the beauty everywhere. And, uh, you know, we really love it. Thank you. <clears throat> no other questions? I thank you very much. Thank you. Mr. Wayne Standish. You were hiding back there. <laughs> okay. You all know me, I'm Wayne Standage. Uh, born and raised in Arizona, fifth generation. Several ancestors founded the Goldfield Ghost Town. Found the mine back in the 1890s. As a five-year-old, I've been in and out of this area for all my life. I'm 70 now. And <laughs> when my wife and I moved over here with our horses, we wanted to have them right here at the house with us. So we found a place. That's where they've been. I got busy working with Jeff Bell, and then he had me put in for the uh, Parks and Rec, and that's the board I've been on ever since, since about 2006. Um, I've worked with uh, Liz Langenbach, Jeff Bell, and we've done a lot of nice things. I remember being there when we did Silly Mountain, and Tess, you remember the the row we had with that meeting. <laughs> yeah. And also for with uh, Flatiron going in here, yes. we're working on the dog park now. Uh, Liz is a very good leader for Parks and Rec. And I'd like to be reappointed for Parks and Rec. Also, I'm up for municipal property. And I put in for that back when uh, John was mayor. Long ago. Long ago. 
And the reason I put in is nobody would step mm -hmm. forward to volunteer. Yep. And that is one board that has to meet state law. Mm -hmm. So I've been on that one ever since, and I can thank uh, Ed Barker for making me the chairman on that board. <laughs> but that's where I kind of stand on that. Uh, I do have several degrees in criminal justice and another one in history uh, <clears throat> of the Southwest and a minor in education. So I kept busy through my life. I worked for APS at Palo Verde Nuclear Generating Station. On my days off, I was a sworn officer for Maricopa County Sheriff's. So I've watched this area totally change since, let's say, 1960, the best I can remember. And uh, so I'll leave it open to you now for any questions. <coughs> you yeah, got some, Joel? Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Um, first of all, Wayne, thank you for your long service to the boards. You certainly have been around for a long time, and it's much appreciated. Um, in that experience and everything that you've been able to bring to the table with your fellow board and commission members so far, what else do you want to see brought to Apache Junction, especially in terms of Parks and Rec? Parks and Rec, I still got two projects I'd like to finish, which is uh, areas for horsemen to park their trailers and ride the open space. We don't have, you can't go right from your house safely out to the open space still, even with uh, the program that was brought in from ASU. Uh, the other thing is firearms and firearm safety. And uh, those two issues I've talked with Liz about and we'll try to see if we can get something done on that this time. Thank you. Anyone else over here? Anyone over here? Thank you, Wayne. Okay. Thank good you. Good to see you. Yeah, it's good to be up and around now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Michael Sutton. Doctor. <clears throat> Good evening, council members and mayor. Uh, my name is Dr. Michael Sutton. I am semi-retired because I can't figure out which, which half is actually retired. <laughs> <laughs> I've lived here in Apache Junction for the last year. And during that time, I've developed a lot of relationships because I used to teach full-time in MBA programs and business programs and entrepreneurship programs. So I'm applying for the Industrial Development Authority. However, from what I'm learning this evening, it must be one of the most inactive and <laughs> understated organization around. I have uh, 35 years of business experience in Canada before I was invited in by McGill University to do my doctorate. I was 50 years old when I started. I was 57 when I graduated. I'm glad I didn't wait till I was 70. I can tell you it would have been quite a ordeal. <laughs> I've been living in the States now for the last 20 years, teaching at Kent State, uh, teaching in Salt Lake City at Westminster College, Boise State, along with three other online universities. I continue my coaching of entrepreneurs with the Arizona Commerce Authority Arizona State University Center for Entrepreneurship, Gateway Community College Center for Innovation and Entrepreneurship, and I'm developing a relationship now with the City of Superior, which is developing their own Center for Innovation and Entrepreneurship. I have served uh, on volunteer boards with cities in the past at the City of Ottawa, Ontario, I sat on the Air and Water Pollution Subcommittee for three years. During that period of time, that was in the 80s, we developed the Blue Box program, which now has gone across both Canada and the US, and it's all about the recycling of materials. So I led that particular initiative so we could do a cost-benefit analysis 
to make sure we could make money recycling. I've worked with the mayor's office in Salt Lake City in a strategic planning initiative. I've met with uh, Janine Hanasoli here in the Economic Development Group and have also developed a relationship with uh, Gateway Community College's workforce development. I'm very interested in seeing business capitalize on the growth here in Apache Junction. And so really the only board or commission I could see where I might be qualified to help would be the Industrial Development Authority. But I have to ask you, what does it do? Because I can't <laughs> find a bloody thing about it. <laughs> That's what it does. That doesn't mean you get to back out of your application either. I mean, I want to be actively involved sure. in business development. I sit on as a volunteer with Penal County and their criminal tracking system. I continue with my work with a number of different uh, universities and commerce groups here in the greater Phoenix area. Gosh, what would it take to get there is uh, Apache Junction kind of off the ground in this area. Money. I'm seeing so much going on. <laughs> Just money. Yeah. You know. Mm -hmm. We used to have funding for it, and that kind of, the state took it away. Well. So, since then, we haven't had a lot going on, but we've just also annexed all of this land to the south of us. I, I'm familiar with the map and what's so going on there. Even yes. though it has been dormant, that doesn't mean that it's planning on staying that way. Well, being semi-retired, I do not want to retire into a group that doesn't do anything. So sure. if it is going to be active and going to pursue some significant strategic goals, for example, I'm being interviewed tomorrow by your economic development facilitator mm -hmm. who's looking after their strategic plan as a potential stakeholder for this area. Uh, so I really want to see um, something kick ass and take names and get going here. So if I can be a resource to help do that, I would look forward to it. I'd embrace any questions you might have. Your Honor. Yes. Um, not so much a, a question, just a suggestion, because I, I think you have a, a phenomenal background and great experience. Uh, I would recommend reaching out to the uh, Pinal County Schools Office, the Pinal County School Superintendent. Uh, on November 5th, they're getting ready to have their business and education summit. And this is a lot of what your background is, is really focused on, um, working with the business community and the educational community and bringing the two together and figuring out how they can partner and work toward, you know, work together through uh, not only our, our uh, middle schools and high schools, but into the secondary level with our Central Arizona Community College as well. So um, they're always looking for people to uh, help with that. So please reach out to them. Thank you. Good suggestion. <laughs> Anyone else over here? Yes. I have the same comment like Braden did, not so much any questions, but instead of limiting yourself to these few boards and commissions, some of which never meet, <laughs> hardly. Uh, have you thought about going over and speaking with Larry Kirsch, the Director of Development Services? Because with what Gail just said, with the new growth coming, that's in the next 10 to 20 years, that whole area south of the US 60 is going to be developed. And you know, I don't know if you could offer your services what they could use but I'd suggest you go talk to Larry. It's K I, how is it? R C H. K I R C H? Yeah. In development services. Be glad to do that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you. Thanks a lot. And Verna Walters. Right there. Yes. You have but the most patience. <laughs> that that, that uh, goes with our last names. Mm -hmm. Mine's Wilson, so mine's always last as well. So I <coughs> sympathize with you very strongly. And unfortunately, my first name is also Walter, so I got hit both times. <laughs> Mayor Wilson and uh, Council, my name is Vera Walters, and I am on the library board, have been for three years, and I would definitely like to continue 
I have a master's degree in English, not that that's directly uh, the experience that I'm bringing to the board. I do a lot of volunteer work in the area, and I believe strongly in giving back to my community. The position I have on the board is pretty easy because, one, we have the greatest library around, <laughs> as well as the greatest parks and rec, I might add. And we have the best library director I've ever seen. <laughs> Someone with that kind of innovation and go get them new ideas. We can't, I can't offer anything because she comes up with it first every time. It is a pleasure to work on the library board. I am very active in the library. I've already always been an avid library user. I was glad when they hired Vicki to do some uh, programming, and I've given several programs in that large room before the COVID happened. Mm -hmm. You might have seen my debut on television when I did the um, little blurb on their Facebook page about uh, the library, and the little Megan did such a good job on getting me so I wasn't so nervous. And always advertising or putting out there the new things that the library has to offer. I hope you've all seen the storyboard at uh, Flatiron Park. And we have so many facilities in the library. I want to be there. So I ask you to seriously consider my application to continue on the board. I see. Anything else? Do you have any questions? questions? Pam, did you bribe your library board members to say good things? Come on now. <laughs> she doesn't have to. <laughs> and we miss you on the board. Thank you. I miss you all. Anyone all over here have a question? Mm -hmm. Well, thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> you have the privilege. I waited Thanks. two hours and you don't uh, have to. <laughs> 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 You, get the you were so thorough. <laughs> you get the privilege of hearing me say, I adjourn this meeting. Thank oh, you. Actually, I, Your Honor, I had, I had a wait, couple wait, comments, wait, if wait, I may. Wait a minute. I, w I was. Re, re, re and adjourn. <laughs> okay. I stopped the adjournment. Yeah. Um, I just had a few comments, and I had a, a couple of things that I just wanted to ask uh, in relation to the application and application process. Um, First, I just wanted to say, um, this is my eighth time doing these interviews, and I am absolutely blown out of the water with the applicants. I, I just, we get great applicants every year, but this interview process has been an eye-opener and just absolutely amazing to see the people that love this community, that want to be involved in this community, that um, have gone from other places intentionally to come here and be a part of this community. It's amazing. I am just, and I see, it, it's so funny that I believe your name was Sarah, commenting about wanting to be, you know, on the council. Because right before you said that, I thought, there are so many people here that I see as up and coming leaders um, at some point that are probably going to be here. And so I just think that's, that's awesome. Um, when we're talking about, I just wanted to just share some thoughts that I had with the fellow council members. When we talk about um, in our interviews, experience, um, what experience people have. When so several of us had served on uh, boards before getting on council, it's not too, not too common for uh, people to get on the council without serving on boards. A lot of us didn't necessarily have experience, but what we had was interest and drive to be a part of the community. Um, and try to serve the community. And there's not necessarily, you know, there's some, there's some things that in our backgrounds that might uh, be beneficial to serve on boards. Um, but I just wanted to share, just when you hear how, how everybody had nothing but good things to say about this community and just the love for the community and the positivity here and how they just really had a drive to serve, um, I think that's huge. Yeah, I, I really think that's a huge factor um, I think backgrounds are great. We, I don't know that we've ever had some of the experience that we've seen with some of these applicants. Obviously, the Citizens Leadership Academy is always a, uh, an important thing. It gives you an idea of, um, 
kind of what you're getting into, how the city government works. Uh, planning and zoning is a great stepping stone for council. Um, it always comes up um, uh, frequently for people that are considering it. It's a great stepping stone to see if you're really uh, interested in this, this other side of it. Um, and it's a difficult decision as we start appointing people. But when we look at, um, we look at incumbents and we have new applicants and, and where the uh, openings are, um, for me on a personal level, unless there's an issue or a lot of absences, it would be really difficult to pull somebody off of a board. Really, if they're interested and they're serving and they're getting involved and, 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 and they're engaged in the meetings um, and they're attending the meetings, it would be kind of difficult to, to, to pull somebody on some of those boards and, and replace them with new applicants. But we, we always ask the new applicants, if you don't get it, don't take it personal and keep trying. We'll find a place for you. There's a, there was a few good suggestions here about getting, maybe the police department needs volunteers. The, you know, we can always use interns in uh, the planning and developing uh, department. And so I just, I just wanted to share some of those thoughts, but also in the application process, one of the things that I looked at, a question, and I have no idea where this question came from. Uh, do you have any past or current legal disputes with the city? Inclusive of any code compliance notices of violations, civil or criminal, criminal municipal or superior court actions, claim for damages, lawsuits, uh, educated adverse judgments, or unsatisfying liens. I don't know how in the hell that question became part of this applicant process. I don't know if we discussed it and came to a consensus, but quite frankly, on a personal level, I don't think it belongs here. Because if we're gonna start asking this, are we gonna start asking, did you run a red light? Do you have a ticket here? And you know, have you had a dog issue with your dog uh, not getting license or something? So I would like to know where that question came from because I never remember it in any previous packets. Uh, and why in the world we would ever want to ask that question and if that is in fact the consensus of the council <clears throat> your honor i know back at the retreat in june this was not something on the agenda or was not on the um <clears throat> discussion i actually think maybe jennifer can help us out a little bit on that because i think it was last year's process when we talked about it but i'm not sure how it actually got into the packet and it's certainly something we can take off I have been looking through the past council agendas and minutes looking for the discussion because I do recall the discussion um, that council wanted that question. I just have not found it yet in the minutes. I haven't had a whole lot of time to search. I will continue. Um, I believe the question then was added when Jill was deputy um, because I didn't know that the application had been modified. But I believe it was one of council's comments that they wanted the question there was a discussion i just don't know when it was jennifer we can we'll keep looking in the minutes and we'll keep looking but i i, I know it was it wasn't at the retreat recently in june the process that you have tonight was an outcome of outgrowth of some of the discussion a year ago and that retreat and i want to give kudos to matt and jennifer for really working together to put this all in one way now specifically to that question we'll have to keep researching I'd like to know if it's a consensus of the council to have that in this, in this interview. I, I, if we're going to ask this question, how far is it going to go? Is my question to my fellow council members: Are we going to, where does it begin and where does it end as far as digging into people's backgrounds? Are we going to do background checks for board board members? Your Honor, yes. if, if if I can add to that at least, um, I agree with Council Member Rizzi, uh, or I'm sorry, Vice Mayor Rizzi. Um, uh, it, I think, first of all, I, I don't think it's pertinent information to deciding if we, uh, we appoint somebody to a board or commission, seeing as uh, it's not a disqualifying factor to be on a board or commission. Um, second of all, I, I think it goes down a very dangerous path because, quite frankly, it's not the public's business to know if there's an open code case going on uh, to one of those members or if there's a pending lawsuit. Um, there's, especially in Lovely. terms of a pending lawsuit of any kind, um, there are things that obviously council members can't discuss. Um, you heard a couple things tonight where if, you know, a, an example of a member being on a board where they have to recuse themselves, there's those opportunities the same as, as we would have here. Um, I, I'm not a fan of that question. It, it struck me out as well, and, and I've been questioning how that got into the uh, line of questions as well. I, I 
definitely think that in general, in terms of the board and commission process, we need to have a, a bigger conversation about revamping some things and, and looking at how we go through this process. And I know we haven't been able to do that um, yet since the, the board retreat. And that is something that I, I would like to see done before we start appointing boards and commissions by this time next year. Um, I'll leave it at that for now. Yes. I just want to thank all of the applicants for applying for these boards and commissions. Um, this city would be hard pressed to operate without all of the volunteers that we have. But don't limit yourself to just these boards and commissions as I recommended to somebody about, you know, go talk to planning and development and see if they can use your services. Um, I was a volunteer with the pl uh, police department for 18 years. Um, I, I reshelved books because I knew the Dewey Decimal System with the library. <laughs> you know, it's still used. <laughs> and uh, so, you know, if there's something that you have an interest in, you, you don't have to wait and apply to boards and commissions. Go talk to the city. Go talk to the departments. Go to Jennifer here in the city clerk's office. Go ask her if she needs a volunteer, you know, or, or some, some of the other departments. So don't limit yourself because a lot of the departments, you know, can, can use different uh, people doing different things. And uh, the best thing about volunteering that way is uh, you get to pick and choose when you want to work. <laughs> so, you know, that's another way to help out your community. Thank you. Okay, now I will adjourn.